Ya what a mighty God we serve. What a great God. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We bless you for the opportunity to be in the presence of God. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let's just do what we normally do here as you connect. God bless you. Um, please, can we just share this on our wall? Invite your friends, your family members. God is a great God. We thank him for the opportunity to be in the presence of God. We share of his glory. Hallelujah. Let us do justice to this and share it on our walls and bring our family members. Oh, Lord, Father, God bless you. As you do that, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt, we magnify you, we worship you. Let's just begin to worship him. He's mightier than the mightiest, and he is greater than the greatest. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just share this on your wall and let's make heaven smile once again. Amen. Give glory unto the holy name of Jesus. Give him all honor and adoration. He is mightier than the mightiest and he is greater than the greatest. We thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We exalt, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. We are still continuing with the power of sonship. It's a great authority when it's being released upon a man, the power to become a son of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many that receive him, John chapter 1, verse 12, there he gave the power to become the sons of God. So it's, it's a very strong authority to be a son of God is given. Sons are given. I told you the Bible says in Isaiah, unto us a child is born, and to, unto us a son is given. Then he began to talk about what he will be of. His, the government shall be upon his shoulder, he shall be called counselor, the mighty God, and so on and so forth. So many of us have assumed that position of being a son. We have grown into it. And the, since we become a son, what the responsibilities that have been given to us, what are we doing with it? So sonship is about responsibility. A son is a carrier of family name. A son is a builder of house. Hallelujah. So we are builders of the layer, co-builders with Christ. The Bible says we are joint heads with Christ and Christ to the Abrahamic covenant which is still what we all are running to try to, to get to the finished job that was passed down to us. Many of us, the patriots, our fathers of the old, they handed us over a great ministry. And they, we talked about the mountains of influence yesterday. We focused on economy, which is the bigger part of it. There are other ones, but today we are going to kind of dive into something that has to do with that, you know, the religion and the, what it takes to maintain a good son, a true son, a reliable son. You know, I'm going to give us um, the in depth of this today, hallelujah, as we go further. Let us thank God for everything. Just worship him and adore him. Today is going to be kind of, we are, we are learning, we are relearning, we are unlearning. The first thing is to unlearn, relearn, and learn. Learn, unlearn, and relearn. Because sometimes the information we have, they become so old that we need to update it. Life is not stagnant, like life is progressive. So um, as we understand God through revelation and through information, we begin to update the information that we have about God into a broader concept. So we're talking about still what the Bible said, the entrance of the world bringeth light and understanding to the simple. 
Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we hear and speak now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're talking about stewardship songs. You know, songs that have stewardship, they are the ones that God is going to trust. You know, when you're dealing with God, God is always looking for a man or woman that is going to be faithful. And to be faithful is almost at the highest level of mature songs. God told Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, he said, get thee out of thy father's house, out of thy kindred to a place I will, I will show you, I will bless thee, and I will make your name great, and in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. But God said something when he was talking about blessings. He said, I will bless you, and thou shall become a blessing. So the, the, the condition to remain in blessing is, Abraham, as I keep blessing you, you will also be a blessing. And the Bible said, Abraham departed. Abraham was, the Bible says he believed God and he was counted to him as righteousness. If we talk about the whole of it in the book of Hebrew 11, Abraham was one of the pillars there. And this is, this, these, are, these are things that they did without even a, a reference point. Many of us, we have the Bible, we have the books of great books, even in our time, people that have lived that life of great faith, people that have lived the life of faithfulness and still worship we can look back to. Some of us have great mentors that we can go back and they, they take from their life. But these men, in their time, they don't have much materials to hold on to. But they were just going by their guts and they, probably there was, a, there was a spirit that was leading them. Because the Bible said they that, that, they that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. So we're talking about still worship as one of the highest level of mature sons. A man's son. You know, a son that when you are not at home. You will be rest assured that you have a great son. I'm not when I'm talking about sons. For those of you that are ladies, beautiful ladies here, I just want you to know that every child of God is a son. That's the highest um, 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 rank in the kingdom. The power of sonship. The Bible says, "As many that receive him, there he give power to become the sons of God." Sons are given. So we start as a child, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. But we grow as children. In the time of our growing, we make mistakes. We get corrected. We correct ourselves. We learn, unlearn, and relearn. We just keep going. When we become a son, it is time to start taking responsibilities. And that you are a son doesn't mean that you know everything. You have to still check back with your father to see what he wants you to do at every point in time. So a son is a person that carries the family name, a builder of the home, a one that stays back to make sure the house is in order. So we are sons, we are steward sons, not just being a son, they are vagabond sons. The Bible says in, in the book of um, Acts 19, they uh, say some of the vagabond sons of Skipha. They were sons, but they were vagabond sons. You don't want to be a vagabond son or a son that is unfaithful. And God is talking about the faithful ones. Faithfulness is part of the greatest pillar in the four pillars of God. I'm going to show us in the book of um, Psalm 89. The Bible says the throne, the two thrones that carry God, that God sits upon, is righteousness and justice. Righteousness, what is righteousness? To live right. The right things, to do the right things, to think right, to act right. So God sits on righteousness and justice. In fact, let's go to Psalm 89. Uh, we, I, I, was, I wasn't going to st start there, but I think it's, it's, it's even better that we start there. The book of Psalm 89, I want you to see verse 14. Uh, if you read it from NIV, even King James Version talks about justice and the just, justice, something like that. But NIV put it well. He said, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. So if you are talking about the throne of God, having these two pillars, and you know how big God is, so these pillars should be very tall. If God is sitting on the third heaven and the, the earth is his full stool, so whatever is carrying God have to be very, very tall. So I want you to see how great importance these are among the four pillars that was introduced in the throne. The Bible says, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. So those are two pillars that 
is holding the, the throne and love and faithfulness go before the, these are the ones that are in front of God. I don't know if I lost somebody here, but I want you to know that faithfulness is very, very, God placed that God, God put so much emphasis on still worship and still worship can only happen when we are faithful. Um, I was talking to one of my sons and every time we talk, he told me, he said, Bishop, do you know that everything, even great job, great marriage, all is a test. He said, I have learned to be faithful, to be a faithful steward. That's the, that's, that's the word he used every time we talk. He said, Bishop, I have learned to be a faithful steward. I thought I know God. I did some great things in the presence of God. But every time I am not a faithful steward, I get back to what I call the foundational level, square one. Everything I have worked for will just get evaporated, destroyed. I keep going back and forth. This time I told God, I said, no, I just have to be faithful and just be faithful and stay a faithful steward. So if you understand this, these are men that God will entrust everything with. Do you know for 25 years, God still did not trust Abraham. Even when he gave him a son at the age of 100, the Bible said before then God says circumcised and said at the age of 99, God is trying to see can this man be trusted? And Abraham did, and not just by himself. He says circumcise everyone that is in your household. And Abraham did 318 men, we, we understand when he went to the battle of Chedorama, we're living with him. All these men have to sit at home while the women will go and hustle and bring food. Because when you cut yourself as a mature person, everyone from the age of 18 is very painful. And you know, what can they do? You can't walk around. It's going to be hurting you all day. So they sat there. I don't know for how long in those ancient times for this wound to heal. It was painful. But God wanted to see, will he be faithful? When he was faithful, he got a son. But now Abraham was 116 years old. Isaac was about 16 years old. God said, now take that your son, thy only son, Isaac, because God knew he had Ishmael, which has been taken away. But God wanted to make sure that Abraham will not go and bring back Ishmael and put on the altar for him. So God said, take thy son, thy only son, the one that you love, Isaac, and take him down to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering for me. If you read from verse 1 of that Genesis, I think 22, the Bible says, and God did tempt Abraham. He want to see if he's going to be faithful. He has promised him heaven and earth. He has, he has promised him everything. Abraham has become rich even by this time. He has a son. So he would have just quit and say, God, I'm not going to do these things with you anymore. I think I was following you before. I didn't have these things, but now I think I'm done. Just you go, just be by yourself and let me just go on and move on with my life. He could have done that. Some of us have done that in different ways. We didn't verbalize it by telling God what to, where to get off, but we just stay away. We just stay away. And even when we hear the voice of God, we ignore it and just do our thing. But the Bible says, Abraham saddled his axe and took his son and Eliezer, his main servant, and they left. And they took the wood and they took Isaac. And as they were going, Isaac was feeling it. He had seen his father do sacrifice. But he didn't understand this sacrifice that we are going to do. And we are not going with a sheep or a cattle, a goat, some kind of thing that we are going to put in the altar. He asked questions on the way. Father, we have the wood, we have the fire. Where is the lamb? But he said, God will provide. On the way to the mountain top, he asked the same question. The father said, God will provide. We know the end of the story. But when he did that, God said something, and the Bible said God came back immediately, said, Abraham, touch not the lad, for now I know that thou feareth the Lord. Some translations say, for now I know that thou loveth the Lord. And God began to recount what he had said before. He said, in blessing, I will bless you, and every man that causes thee is cursed. Hallelujah. See what she, he did as God asked him to do without questioning God. In our time, many of us, we think that church is a democratic setting. We try to make it like that because the world have gone so much into the woodworks of um, um, uh, liberalism and progressiveness. So the church is trying to, um, what would I say, evolve with the world. But the church is a place where you hear and you, 
you obey the last command. Obey. That's the word. The greatest word in the Bible is obedience. The, the second one is service. What told Job in Job 36 verse 11. He said, if you obey and serve the Lord, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Obey. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, if thou art willing and obedient, thou shalt eat the good of the land. It takes a steward to obey everything because sometimes the obedience might be very, very steep. It might not be what you expect and how you want it. Like God telling Abraham to put his son on the altar and kill him. How many of us will obey that? Or telling Abraham at the age of 75, get out of thy father's house and go this way. And many times when we see somebody that is going through their wilderness and maybe God is training them, they are going through growth. You know, sometimes you are growing, you don't know that you are growing. And it doesn't look because now you don't have a house. You don't know that, that, I will just put this example. When Joseph and Mary, they saw angel in the same week, that Angel Gabriel visited Mary and visited Joseph. They were homeless. How can you say that you are a blessed woman? The angel said, help Mary, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. How can you be blessed? How can you say you are special? God has selected you and you are homeless. It is sometimes some of those things you can't reconcile it. But let me tell you that is the mystery about God. God allowed them to be homeless for his own glory because he has arranged the wise men from the east to bring every money that they will need that everything that no man should help them so that when God blesses them they will know that they are really blessed by God so they were homeless for a while so maybe you are homeless now or you don't have a job or something this COVID economy has really taken you out of the mainstream of life don't be worried if you have God hold on to what you have and keep doing what he has asked you to do. If you're a pastor, things are not happening. Like we are going through a lot of things now, but we put our best face every day. We come and say, praise the Lord. We worship God. We move on with God because we know what has what he has asked us to do. The assignment and the will of God, we will stay with the will. The job is not your job. The business is not yours. The ministry is not yours. You're, whatever you are occupying, the position is not even yours. The Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So your job, your joy, your prosperity, everything is for his own glory. You just stay. As a, a, a steward, as a mature son, you just go through the, the process. You just keep on going with God. Oh, Makata, I don't want to go very, very far away from where we are supposed to be. Let's just have some beef and meat. So I, like I said in Psalm 89, the Bible said the, 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 the seat, the throne of God, the pillar that carries that throne is righteousness and justice. So that's why God does not joke with that. You know, and in front of it is love and faithfulness. So the Bible said righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Your throne. The foundation. So what is carrying the throne is not the throne itself. But whatever is carrying it is these two pillars. This tower is tower because if God is sitting in the third heaven and the earth is his footstool, righteousness and justice will be as far as the heaven is from the earth. That is how big and long it is to go. He will he sit on it. That's why he's a righteous judge. In the, in the court of God, it's not the person that called the police that wins the case. It's the person that his hand is clean. Then when they go to equity, they get justice. Or somebody that have mercy upon them. When the angel of mercy is speaking upon you, if you are not right, you become right because there is mercy in your life. Oh, Bagasaka, that's a message for another day. So well, let's go. First Corinthians, amen. In the name of Jesus, chapter four, look at verse two. The Bible said, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what faithful. You can't be a steward if you are not faithful. Sometimes we say we are stewards, but we are not faithful. So how, do I call you a steward? I don't know how to put it. A lot of people are serving, but how many are faithful servants? Are you serving because the master is looking at you? So you serve, I service. You serve because God is watching. You serve because the lights are still on. You serve because people are coming in. You serve because everybody's watching you. The service is where you nobody's looking at you. 
Are you still going to be faithful to do, you know, to do what God has asked you to do? Are you still going to be faithful to keep coming? Even when there's no reason to come anymore, are you going to still be faithful to pray? Even while there's no, if you look around you, there is no much things to show off of, to tell people this is what God has done in a while. And you still pray and say, God is a good God. How many of us can hold on to that and still say, that's what we're talking about. Still what sons, matured sons, men's sons. It's a man church, a man's son. Hallelujah. That is when you see men, that's why they say, the, 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 the nature of a man, I'm talking about the male child, is that they don't cry. That many of them go through things, they groan inside. So if you are going to be a son of God, whether you are a female body, but you are a son, you have to groan inside. You can take your, your case to God and put it in the, the heavenly court and judge your case there. But when you still come out, you say, hey, how are you all doing? God is good. Praise the Lord. How many of us can go through that? And Joseph was looking at himself being homeless with a new bride coming to his village in his town and nobody wanted, even no uncle or auntie say, please, can we just let this young couple come in? Because they have pre prejudged them that the wife is a promiscuous woman. This woman, her bride price have not been paid. There's not a wedding. They have not done the rights. They have not done everything. And she's already pregnant. Whoa. That means she must have been cheating. Or my, my uh, Joseph has broken the code, the law. So he has been with her before they even asked for the marriage, which is also against the law. So everybody judged them and just threw them out. So they were outcasts because she was standing with pregnancy when she has, she has, they have not finished her rights. Let's move forward. Let's put some. Some, some some meat in this. Look at the Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. I, I want to read, and I, I, read, I read it yesterday in King James. I want you to understand Jesus is still talking about being faithful to God, a, a steward, and we choose, we pick and choose where we want to be faithful with God. And Jesus said here, he talked about tithing and, and, and resources and some other things. Matthew 23, 23. He said, what to you, teachers of the law, that means the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. You give tithes of your spices, mints, deals, and conies. You pay tithes in all these things, but you have neglected the more important matter of the law, justice. So you, 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 you oppress people while you keep paying tithes. You do wrong to people. God doesn't like ugly. Why are you paying your tithes? You neglect the, the matters of the law, justice, mercy, Faithfulness, you pay, you don't even pay complete tithe. You don't do the will of God in fullness. But because you think you pay tithe, then you are practicing. Then Jesus said, you should have practiced the letter, the tithe, letter, without neglecting the former. So both the former and letter in have to go together. And I, I know sometimes I see people say, Jesus did not talk about that. He talked about tithe. He talked about resources and laws. Now he's telling them, not that the tithe was not good. They pay tithe in some things. The things they want to pay tithe in, they pay tithe in spices and in mint and drink and cooney. They pay tithe of that. But they have neglected justice, treating people right. Our God is a God. His throne is a throne of righteousness and justice. I want you to know that. It's almost very important to God. Righteousness and justice are uh, uh, the pillars, the, 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 the towers of his throne. And in front of God is faithfulness. Hallelujah and love. So God is looking at love and faithfulness for the rest of the existence and God has no end. So God is always looking at love and faithfulness and there's righteousness and justice that he sees on her. See what she saw. I don't know how many of us have erred as a son, and we are not we are not having that rightful stewardship in us. We don't have right standing with God. We have time to make amends. The Bible says, in the big house, which is the house of God, is a very big house. We talked about it yesterday. There is vessel of gold. There are vessels of silver. There are vessels of wood, and there are vessels also that are of earth, earthly things. He says some of them are for honor, some of them are for dishonor. But if you are for dishonor, if you purge yourself and make it right, you will be a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. 
So don't be, don't be angry with yourself if you have not been faithful before now. But just be happy that you have known the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to my father except by me. So everything about God is when you know the truth, you stay with the truth, you do the truth. The, 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 a son, a steward son, is a son that have understood his father's mind and that is going to do the biddings of the father, regardless of what is challenging them, what is against them, what is in front of them. We are not going to change because of the, the people in front of us today and we want to we want to please them and we change what we used to be. Then tomorrow we see another group of people, we change again. That's what the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were doing in the time of Jesus. And Jesus said they were hypocrites. You pay tight of these little things, you want to show up and you have neglected the other one. You were oppressing people. You don't have mercy for anybody. You are not faithful and you, you could have practiced both. You could have been faithful and have mercy and also be a person of justice while you pay your tithe. Why should you do one and leave the other one? Amen. Oh, katasi kataba. Stewardship. And let me tell you, once you are a steward son, you are, you are going to be on that pinnacle of the mountains that I told you yesterday. We talked about the seven mountains in the book of Revelation chapter 17, which God said that the church has to be over it. That's why Jesus came to, re to restore man to the glory. I talk about the mountain of family. We have mountain of religion, the economy. There's a mountain of education. There's a mountain of art and culture, mountain of media. Hallelujah. Media has technology and, and also uh, security in it. We talked about all these mountains yesterday. And the, the mountain of governance. The Bible said the government shall be upon his shoulder. It's seven mountains. And we started, the church started well. We started with a bank. We, the men of God are the ones that bring up precedence. In fact, every day of swearing in, in some nations, it does this. It was going to be the archbishop or the priest will be standing in front of them and say, put your hand on this Bible. I swear by this Bible that I will be the concession. I will do the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I don't know where we have put, put that. Now people are using all kinds of things. I see people use all kinds of things to do their swearing in these days. It used to be the word of God. And it used to be the priest that we call the leaders. So the church was sitting on top of all these things. But today, I don't know where we are. Families, families circle have been broken. Now we have Adam and, Adam and Steve. You know, he wouldn't have Eve and Evelyn marrying. The Bible says he created them male and female. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Single parenting is just rampant, and we don't even preach it in church because it's not cool. The world has changed. God has not changed the standard. If we have erred, it's okay. We can come back and make a mess, but we should not take our errors as the norm. That's what I'm saying. If you are falling short of the glory of God, it's okay. Pick up yourself from where you are and say, God, I'm sorry, and you make a mess. But we should not now try to change of Conform God to the image of man and say, okay, the, the abnormal is now the normal. No, we can't do that. It's a God of righteousness and a God of justice. The sons of sea worship. That's who we are. Look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 2. And we are going to read uh, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, and the word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, so concerning Judah and Jerusalem, which is the church. The Bible says the prince shall all not depart from Judah. The scepter authority shall not depart from Judah. So this is now a, who we are today. Verse 2, he said, it shall come to pass in the last days, these are the last days, that the mountains of the Lord, which is the church, Lord's house, shall be established in the top of the mountains. So the church shall be over every mountain. All these seven mountains. The church the church of Jesus Christ, the sons of God. When I talk about the church, we are looking at building. No, I'm talking about the steward son, the faithful sons, shall be over these mountains. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. The sons of God, we shall become over 
different spheres of influence again. We're talking about the mountain of influence, the seven mountains in the book of Revelation. They are mountains that we have yielded. Like this platform we are using now is owned by people that are not the church. So they, they have to censor you. They have to monitor what you say. If you don't do well, they drop your videos. They cut you out. Why we should supposed to be running the mountain of media technology? Security. We should be off over all these things. The Bible said they, 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 it shall come to pass in the last days. These are the days. So why I'm giving us these things? So you start to prepare yourself, whichever sphere you want, you want to occupy. Jesus said, occupy until I come. Take over, take charge. That the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. People will be coming to you because you are the smartest in the room because you know your stuff. Verse three, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. I'm talking about the church. So when you talk about the mountains and the house of God, it's the church and not just church, it's they are human beings. These are sons of God that are over different spheres. In education, we shall be controlling their religion, media, all the media conglomerates. Technology is, you see, sons of God there. Daniel was that kind of man in his time. Every sphere, there is no government in the whole Persian Gulf area that does not consult Daniel. He was the, the, he was the leader of kings. Kings come and submit to him. And he will teach us his ways. And he will, and we will walk in the path. For out of Zion shall go forth the laws and the sword of the Lord from Jerusalem. If you go down, it starts to talk about judgment, and it shall judge among the nations and rebuke many people. That's all that. We are the ones that are the custodians of the word of God today. We are the embodiment of Christ. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. And if salt loses death, of what use it is, but to trample on the on, on ground and walk upon, that's not who you are. We are still that salt. We are the beacon of this earth. We are the light of the world. A light cannot be lit up and put under a bushel. Hallelujah. We have to shine everywhere we are. Shine in your place of work. Shine in your sphere. We don't have to shine in church. Church is a place of refreshment, a place of, a place of renewal, a place of, um, um, we have to do, restore. Yeah, restore, renew, and refresh. That's what we do in the house of God. We go out there, we shine in the streets. We shine in our place of work. We shine in the place of government in the education sector. That is where the church should be shining. We'll be shining in the highways and the byways. We'll be shining everywhere. So a man will say, wow, I love the way you do this because we have the spirit of excellence. In everything, we, whatever is given it to us, we have to bring our A game to every business presentation, every job. We come with our best face because we are sons of God. Whatever, whatever we are, we must prosper. The Bible says, and Joseph prospered even in prison. Genesis 39. In the prison, he was a prisoner. In fact, in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. He never got any part of Potiphar's blessings. He was not the owner of the cattle and the sheep and the, and the houses and the cars. But because he was there, there was blessing in the house. The man even knew and put him in charge of everything. When the wife lied against him, he went to prison. He prospered in prison also. Because he was a light. It doesn't matter where we are. It might not look good. It might not be what we want to be in. But you find yourself there. You are in a warehouse. You are working in McDonald's. You are a driver. You are. It doesn't matter. You shine in that. Because there is something. Do you know that Mordecai was at the gate? But even as a get man, he was the best get man in his time. That one day the king could not sleep because he has brought information that preserved the life of the king. And at this time, Haman, one of the advisors of the king, was planning to kill him, have all even put up a gallow to kill Mordecai. He didn't know he was trying to touch a son of God. In fact, the worst you can do as an unbeliever is to try to touch a son of God. You are playing with your life. You can do anything, always, but anytime you want to touch them, there's a grace upon their life. 
And that night, the Bible said the king could not sleep. And he began to look at the book of record and they say, what? Oh, what have been done to this person? They say nothing. They say, really? And here comes Haman. He said, what shall I, the king do to the person that he loves? And he looked at himself. I'm the closest man to the king. I have to give him the best. So he began to talk about himself. So he give, let the person ride on the king's moon, put the ring of the king, let him wear the king the robe, and let him be taken out. Let everybody see him and bow to him. All that. He said, as you have said, do to Mordecai, the one that stands by the gate. And the man was going home with his face in his hand. Because his face was shamed that day. But we know the, 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 the rest of the story. The gallows that he prepared for Mordecai and the Jews, he was killed in that gallows. And Mordecai that was a, a gate man became a great man. He was now moved from gate inside the palace to become an advisor to the king. But he started as a gate man. He didn't complain in the gate. Many of us, we are somewhere, we are whining, saying, God, why should I be here? Look at unbelievers are driving the first car and I'm here. God wants you to be the best where you are because you are his son. You are his son. You are his son. Hallelujah. La kataba. You have to be faithful in that small things. Then you start to see God make you great in greater things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brago soko tobo. Baza kataraba. Le kanama shiko tobo. I kanama sakataba. Zakiraba. Le brogo shoko tobo. Si kanama. If you look at Psalm 110, when the Lord was talking to Jesus Christ, and he was his son, and this is what applies to us. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Many of you, the devil has tried to touch your life. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. But at the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. So at the right hand, that's where we locate ourselves. And once you find the presence of God, you begin to look for his right hand. Start to locate his right hand. Begin to make your way to the right hand because the Bible said, Jesus was seated at the right hand. So that's where we are going to join hands with Christ. And many of us are living on earth, but we are seated in the right hand of the Father. The Bible said, the Lord sent, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of where from Zion, the church. Rule thou in the mix of thy enemy. That is where the power shall proceed from. Thy people shall be willing, hallelujah, in the day of thy power, in the beauty of holiness from the wombs of the morning. I told you the morning have the womb. Even the ocean, the Bible says they have a womb. So every day you get up, make sure you put a lot of things into the womb of the, your morning so that by the day it gives you birth. It gives birth to that. It delivers to you. Thou has the dew of thy youth. And now look at where we all are joined. Here. That's how we became priests. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Mekishadeh. So we are royal priesthood. We are not from the lineage of priesthood, which is the Levitic order. Ha. The Levitic order. We are from the order of Mekishadeh. Jesus Christ was a Judah. He was born a Judah from the tribes of the 12 sons. So he was a king by was Judah. The Bible said the scepter of authority shall not depart from Judah until Chilo. Now the Bible said Jesus also was a king and a priest from the order of Mekishadek. You remember Mekishadek that Abraham met was a king of Salem and also a priest of the Most High God. Carry those two orders. That's where we are born out from. Our sonship comes from the order of Mekishadek. We have to reign over our enemies distract us and over every principality and powers. Jesus said, behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Because of our time, I want to show you what we have to do to take back our positions as sons. Stewardship and faithfulness goes hand in hand. When you are a steward, you have to be faithful. That's why I say we are Stewardship souls. We have to exercise that the, the highest le level of sonship, maturity, mature son. Look at Luke 19. If you look at from verse 13, if you look really from verse 11, because of our time, we have to start from verse, verse 13. He says, So he called 10 of his servants. This is the master that this is God, Jesus Christ, calling every one of us, 10 of his servants, and give them 10 minors. Put this money to work. He said, until I come back, 
Bible said, but his subjects hated him and sent delegations after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. So the sons of God are hated here because of our father. When Jesus came here, he, they hated him. So verse 15, he was made king. However, and returned home. Then he sent for the servant to whom he has given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. Verse 16, the first came and said, Sir, your miner has earned 10 miners. Your miner has earned 10. Verse 17, he told him, well done, good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy, King James said, faithful in small things. You have been faithful. I told you that, that God sits in righteousness and justice. And in front of him, in that throne, is faithfulness and love. Because you have been trustworthy. You have been faithful in a very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. You want to become greater. These mountains of influence that we're talking about. You want to take over cities and nations. You have to be a faithful steward. Give account of the little thing that God has given you. Be, be accountable in the life that you need. Be accountable in the resources that God puts in your hand. So many times when we hear giving account, people think it's only money. Account is everything. As you go out and come back, you tell God well, how your day has been. You give account of the day. Give account of your nights. Account of your children, your wife, your husband. Account of the ministry, if you are a minister. The souls that God has put in your life, give account. How good and well you have fed them, you have trained them. Then you give account of your resources. Because if you cannot give God your resources, you are not faithful. These guys made an account. God said, wow, I will put you in charge of 10 cities. We don't have time to go down to the guy that didn't do anything. But this is where we are today. And this is who we are. This is what God has called us to be. To be over cities. But it only can happen when we are faithful stewards. Stewardship as a song has to come naturally where we understand the mind of our father and we do his biddings. We are faithful in small things. Small things. Look at what he said to them. Well done, good servant. They were servants before. His master replied, because you have been faithful in a very, very small, take charge of 10 cities. Now, because you have managed this one very well, I'm going to give you 10 cities to manage. Manage it. Take charge of 10 cities. How many of us want to take charge today? We are going to pray that 10 cities be given to you. 10 cities. Mazeke Teneba. Likata Shakataba. Ten cities. Let God begin to give you ten cities. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Mazoko Torobo Likata Shakataba. Zekina Malakata Sokotobo. Rebaga Shikaraba Likata Sikataba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Romans chapter 12 before we pray. The Bible says, I beseech you, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You present something. The body was given to you, but God said, bring it back to me. Present your physical body. Present your intellectual body. Present your knowledge. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mazekatarabali katashokotomo. Yekene malekata sikataba. Rabigo shokotobo lokoto shokotobo. Ask God to help you to be a faithful steward son. A son that is faithful. You see, if you have been faithful in this small things, I will put you in charge. Rokata sikataba. Likana masokotobo. Ask God to give you the opportunity. Give you the grace to come back and do his business. To begin to serve with joy. In the little things that God has put in your hand, it can be one person that God has allowed you to know. How, how well have you managed that one person? God could have given you some small thing that in the eyes of everybody, people have 20, 30, 
People have hundreds, but you have little. God said, I want you to be faithful with that little things. Those as, as small as they are. How great and how manageable have you done it? Then I will put you in charge of the world. Cities, many of you, cities are in you. God told Abraham, I will bless you and thou shalt become a blessing. Unto nations, hallelujah. Nations shall come out of you. Okata sakataba lekanama shokotobo. Rebiga sakataba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for we know that you have done it. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all honor. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O Lord. As we begin to come back, as to become faithful sons, this message, I want you to share it in every platform. It's not enough to be a son of God, but to be a steward, a son that can be counted on, a son that can be reliable, a son that God can look back and say, wow, my son, Job, he is faithful in everything. A son that God can look back like Abraham and say, Abraham, you are possessor of heaven and earth. Many of them did not even finish their work. They have passed on to something to us. And many of us, are we, we are scattering what the path right have built. It's time to go back to the business and say, God, because of you, everything that you say, that's what I will do. I want you to speak to God now. I say, Holy Spirit, take over my life. Take over my ministry. Take over my family, business, job, whatever it is. I submit unto thy will. I ask that you possess me as I come back today. Holy, acceptable unto the Lord as a reasonable service unto God. I'm a living sacrifice. Lord, I yield my, my, my authority unto you. I yield my will, my power. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before we leave now, I want to, I want to give you one more Bible quotation and we pray. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. He said, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God, grace in its various forms. Use every gift, every gift in you. Makataraba, rabogo shakataba. Every gift that God has given to you, use it to serve God. Use it to serve God. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. If you are here today, you are just, you want to give your life to Christ. You want God to come into your life. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you today. I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. And I confess with my mouth that you are my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Let's go and continue to make God happy and bring glory to the holy name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead of you, and I love you with all my heart, but I will follow Jesus. Love you.